extra minutes. Starting individual treatment with Dr. Tan was empowering, but it was also scary. I was very conscious that if it didn't work out, that I would have no one to blame but myself. During my first ever appointment with Dr. Tam, the questions around my sexual experience began. He asked for intimate details and how I felt about my level of competence in these. His questions were very specific and detailed. He started by asking if I had had sex with a woman, with a man, and received or given oral sex. I was taken aback by his questioning, but I assumed that there was a method to his madness and this would all lead to somewhere helpful. The fact that he asked these questions and I answered them reflects just how much trust and faith I was putting in him that I would endure this line of questioning. His questions then became more explicit. I felt that he was testing my capacity to trust and share these details with him. Dr. Tan had three rules and he would remind me of them all the time. Honesty, this meant not just being truthful but that if he asked, I was to answer. It also implied that he was honest in thought and deed. Confidentiality. This meant that he told nothing of what happened in sessions provided I remain silent also. If he had to breach this, then it would be my fault and my failure to be honest with him. Three, telling him when I was pissed off. This was his way of removing accountability on his part in that he had given me so-called permission to speak up. He put me more at ease by weaving his questions about sex amongst more normal therapeutic questions, like medication, eating habits, and general history. This all helped normalize his sessions with me and I felt more at ease. Eventually, my physical and mental condition deteriorated to the point where I needed a readmission to Northside and it was here whilst in impatient that Dr. Tan assaulted me. Right from the beginning, I constantly raised concerns about the way he touched me and tried to touch me. He told me that I was borderline and described the characteristics of a borderline person, pointing out that one of these was that they made things up. He also told me not to tell other patients what, about what happened in our sessions, saying, because you are special and they will get jealous. He knew that I wanted to study medicine and promised me that he could make this happen. He told me that he would get me into medicine in South Australia, but that I could never return home to my parents. He would be touching me whilst he was reassuring me that he could deliver on this promise. And so I believed Dr. Tan when he told me I was special, that I was beautiful and that he loved me. I believed him when he said that my parents were bad and would continue to hurt me. I believed that he would get me into studying medicine and that everything he did was so that I could live a better life. I would love to say I am blessed to have survived the past two years and that I am glad to be alive. However, this is my hell on earth. Every day is a struggle to survive. Right now I am clinging to the few important things I have in my life because there is now little else between me and death. Each night, I go to sleep scared I might die, without knowing what it is like to live. I want to experience that natural survival instinct. I want to want to live. At this point, my greatest fear is that I won't survive so that I can live the recovered life that I set out to gain when I first went to Dr. Tan.